We're now going to talk about parameterized curves in space and vector valued functions. Now, parameterized curves in space are very much analogous to parameterized curves in the plane. There's just one more variable. So you can write a parameterized curve in space as x equals f of t, y equals g of t, and z equals h of t, where t goes from alpha to beta. Now, since we can identify points in space with vectors, um, both are described by a triple of numbers, it's also convenient to write this in vector form as r of t equals f of t comma g of t comma h of t. Or we might more simply write this as x of t, y of t, z of t. So r of t is our position at time t, and its components are x of t, y of t, and z of t. For example, we could sketch the curve r of t equals cosine t, comma, sine t, comma, t. So let's think about what's going on here. If we ignore the z component, and just think about what the x and y components are doing, then this is a circle. And I should say that since we don't specify a range for t, the default is that t can be any real number. Okay, so the x and y components describe a curve that goes around and around the unit circle, while the z component is moving up at unit speed. So we, that means it always lies on the cylinder, x squared plus y squared equals 1. So let's draw this. So here are the axes. And here's the, the cylinder, x squared plus y squared equals 1. So the curve moves on the cylinder, it rotates in the xy direction while moving up in the z direction. So I'll draw the curve in red. And it's going to look like this. It's a little hard to draw a three-dimensional curve because we lose some information when we project to two-dimensional space. Anyway, you should imagine that the curve, as you go up, the curve is wrapping around the cylinder and moving upward at unit speed. And this curve is called a helix. Now given, we can also think of this parameterized curve simply as a vector valued function. R of t equals x of t, y of t, z of t. So this is a function which inputs a number t and outputs a vector, r of t. Now an important definition is the velocity vector at time t. Now, you already used the word velocity vector earlier. Now, let's give an official definition. So, the definition is it's r prime of t. So, let's think of it just as the derivative of r with respect to t. So, it's the limit as epsilon goes to zero of r of t plus epsilon minus r of t over epsilon. if this limit exists. So as always, when we write a definition like this, it's only defined if the limit exists. Now, it's not hard to check that this is equal to the vector x prime of t comma y prime of t z prime of t when all those are defined.
Now the geometric meaning is that the velocity vector r prime of t points in a direction tangent to the curve. And the velocity, the, the um, length of the velocity vector, this is the speed at time t. So if we imagine we're flying an airplane in three-dimensional space, the length of the velocity vector is our speed, and but the vector contains more information than the speed. It also contains the direction in which we're flying. So the picture, if here's the curve that, that R of t moves along, here's the point R of t identified with the vector, and the velocity vector um, looks like this. The velocity vector is going to be tangent to the curve. Now the tangent line to the curve at time t goes through the point r of t, so that's where we are, um, and has tangent direction r prime of t. So the equation for this tangent line, well, I need a new parameter. So usually I use t for the parameter, but I'm already using t. So I'll use a new parameter, s. So the line, let's call this L of s. So this is the tangent line. So it is r, r of t plus s times r prime of t. So for example, Let's find the tangent line to the curve r of t equals cosine t comma sine t comma t, that's the same curve we had before, at the point 1, 0, 0. Okay, so we first have to figure out which value of the parameter t gives us the point 1, 0, 0. Well, we can see just by looking at the z component that that is t equals 0. So at t equals 0, we have r of t equals 1, 0, 0. Um, and then the tangent vector is r prime of 0, or the velocity vector. So this is minus sine t comma cosine t comma 1 and we have to evaluate this at t equals 0 and so we get the point 0 comma 1 comma 1 and so the tangent line is L of s equals the point that we start on which is 1 0 0 plus s times the tangent vector, which is 0, 1, 1. Okay. Now, related to the velocity vector is acceleration. So the acceleration at time t is the second derivative r prime prime of t. Okay, and so the way this is defined is, well, r prime of t is also a vector-valued function, and so we can differentiate it to get a new vector-valued function, r double prime of t. So for example, this one's of practical importance. So let's consider r of t equals cosine kt sine kt zero. 
So this curve is just moving around the unit circle in the xy plane at speed k. Now then the velocity, r prime of t, is minus k sine of kt, comma k times cosine of kt, comma zero. Okay, so that's, if I draw the circle over here, this is just the xy plane. So here's the circle. So here's our point R of t. So really, I'm identifying this with a vector from the origin to this point. And the velocity vector is tangent to the circle. Um, so this is R prime of t, and it has length k, which corresponds to the fact that we're moving at speed k. And then the acceleration is r double prime of t. So we just differentiate this again, and we get minus k squared cosine of kt minus k squared sine of kt comma zero. So we notice that this looks just like the vector r of t. We've just multiplied it by minus k squared. So that means we point towards the origin that should be going through the origin. My picture is not to scale. So this is r double prime of t. And the length of this is k squared. So this means that if you're driving a car, if you go around a curve at 30 miles an hour, well, if you feel a certain acceleration, um, so your car has to accelerate in the direction of the center of the curve, and then you're pushed to the side in the other direction inside the car. But then if you go around the same curve twice as fast, you're gonna feel four times as much acceleration. So if you try to go around the same curve four times as fast, you're likely to flip over your vehicle or spin out. Good to know if you're ever driving a car.